We've got a good one for you. It's the number four Baylor Bears taking on the number 16 Razorbacks of Arkansas. And if you like a contrast in styles, you have come to the right place. Baylor loves to lock you down defensively. Arkansas wants to get up and down and shoot a lot of threes. With my partner, all-time great and Hall of Famer, Tamika Ketchings. I'm Paul Sunderland. And you talk about it and continue that thought about how different these two teams are, but they have both been successful in very different-looking ways. Well, you know, look at it, you'll see Baylor, the way they play, they like to get, take it at it. Arkansas, this is what they do. They like to take the ball. They're actually a pretty good defensive team. They want to score on the fast break. Amber Ramirez with the early miss. Baylor coming in with a record of 2-0. Coming off a difficult win, 67-62 at USF. Earlier in the week, Arkansas currently at 4-1. Their only blemish, a very, very good Maryland team. They were playing their third game in three days, and Arkansas just did not have their legs, not to take anything away from Maryland at all. Destiny Slocum, the transfer out of Oregon State on the perimeter. Well, that's what Arkansas does so well right there. They like to shoot the three. You'll see that is their game, shooting three. On the defensive end, they like to play kind of the defense you see, a 3-2 zone right there, a little bit of switch. They'll play a lot of different different lineups tonight, but they like to go out on the, on the, on the break. Step back jump shot missed by Queen Egbo, the 6'3 junior out of Houston who had a huge game against USF, 25 points, 11 rebounds. And earlier the jump shot taken by Chelsea Dungey. 5'11 Richard Senior. Five Arkansas Razorbacks to make an average in double figures. They average close to 90 points per game, make it 96 to be more specific. Well, we've talked a lot about Arkansas, but let's talk a little bit about Baylor and what they do so well. You see they're already on the on the board, but one of the things that they do great is they have the inside presence. You think about just the history of the last couple years, what the Baylor Bears have had. They like to get the ball down low. They like to establish you. So they got some great slashes. You'll see some of some of the guards that they have, but Baylor does a great job of just controlling the offensive end. Kalani Brown, Lauren Cox the last couple of years, and now that role being filled by number one in green, Melissa Smith, the 6'2 junior out of Converse, Texas. First free throw up and good for Dungy, a 75% free throw shooter so far on the year, and Arkansas is in the book. And you'll see Chelsea Dungy, she does a great job of being able to get herself to the free throw line. She almost sometimes throws herself in there but she's under control even as it looks different way. And she gets to the free throw line about nine, I think it's 9.6 times a game. Dungey on the attack after the nice dribble drive penetration and the assist to Ramirez. What Baylor has done so wonderfully the last several seasons to the championship there, the last champion in 2019, is they hold you down at the defensive end going to the free throw line is Trinity Oliver. Welcome everybody, just underway here at Bud Walton Arena in Fayetteville, Arkansas, number four, the Baylor Bears at 2-0, taking on Arkansas at 4-1. They are currently ranked 16th. The last time these two teams met was in the 2015 NCAA tournament. That game was won easily by the Baylor Bears, but uh, under Mike Neighbors, Tamika Ketchings, this has become a very, very different Arkansas team and program with a very exciting presence and future as well. They play up-tempo, shoot a lot of threes. And one of the things that Mike Neighbors has really talked about is being able to bring transfers in. You look at Chelsea Dungey right there, number 33, already setting the stage. She is the leader, the captain of this team. And it is through her, really, that Coach Neighbors has been able to develop his system offensively and defensively. Dungey already with half a dozen, all six points now for Arkansas. Gifted offensive player, Tamika. Well, she's able to do, she's just creative. She's able to do a lot of different things. She can shoot the three, so you have to respect her from the three-point line. She can get to the basket. Her mid-range game is probably the only area that I've seen that she probably needs to improve the most. But she can get to the free throw line, which she knows to do. We talked about transfers. Destiny Slocum, a new transfer for this year, came from Oregon State. Before that, she went to the University of Maryland her freshman year. But she is a player that knows how to score. Arkansas is becoming one of those teams that you have to watch out for on the offensive end. 
Beautiful backdoor cut by Moon Urson, 5'8", senior out of Louisiana. Dungey again. Dee Dee Richards, one of the great stories in all of sports. An amazing comeback after a very, very dangerous injury. There she is, number two in green with it. Played against USF. Came back after 38 days of rehabilitation. Spent some time on a walker. That ball rims in and out. Trinity Oliver takes the offensive rebound and on the possession arrow. That will stay with the Baylor Bears. Well, it's interesting. Baylor talked about Dee Dee Richards and her story, but the thing that Dee Dee Richards brings to the team is her experience and her versatility. Last year, she was not a point guard. This year, coming in, Coach Mulkey said, we need you to play the point. We need you to play the point for the experience and for what you bring as far as from a leadership standpoint. So she said, okay, and then you, you'll get to see her at the point guard in her second game of this year. Another aggressive attack of the basket. The officials will look that one over, and it is a turnover by Arkansas after five, off of 5'9", Richard Sr. Amber Ramirez, another transfer from TCU. We've already talked about Slocum. Destiny Slocum started and was the national freshman of the year at Maryland, then went to Oregon State. She and Mike Neighbors have a long relationship. We'll talk more about that as the game goes along. A lot of contact down inside. Melissa Smith with the touch for the first time, the 6'2 junior we talked about. And her role, Tamika, is really going to change. When we talked to Kim Mulkey, she said, look, Lauren Cox is gone. Kalani Brown has obviously been gone for a season or two. And now it's time for Melissa Smith, number one in green, who was the preseason Big 12 player of the year to really step into a much bigger role. Uh, Melissa Smith, number one, Queen Egbo, who you just saw right there, number 25. The two of them down low are hard to guard. They are players that you have to respect. I mean, right there, Queen Egbo gets that role. The Baylor has done a great job on their pick and roll, trying to get their post players to the basket. And really now it's just about finishing. Chelsea Dungy picks up her first personal foul rule to be just inside the restricted area. Egbo last year, sixth person of the year, averaged 11.7 rebounds in her first game again, a double-double against USF after sitting out the opener for Baylor to go along with three blocks. Well, it's interesting going back to Melissa Smith. This year she's in a different role because she doesn't have the players that are there to kind of defer the attention. So she was able to get the role, she was able to get the easy look because you had to respect the Lauren Cox that was on the floor, the Taya Jackson that was out there the year before, Chloe Jackson. You had to respect the other players, so she was kind of able to sneak in. This year, her role is different because they need her to score. Very nice offensive set ball. Ramirez with a step back jump shot, Arkansas with the early five point lead. Baylor has not shot the ball at all well, particularly from distance so far. Just a very small sample size in their two games. That ball missed by Smith, and Arkansas looking to run once again. Here's Jalen Mason back with the Razorbacks after missing all of last year, but another turnover for Arkansas this ruled off of Mason. Well, Baylor's going to have to do a good job, they just did at that time, but of getting back on the defensive end. Arkansas lives in that fast break lane. The Coach Neighbors is not a fan of holding the ball just to hold the ball and setting up offense or half-court offense. He wants to run. He wants the first shot, the best shot, whatever shot. And so you'll see in this game, Arkansas will take a lot of, got a questionable shot, but that's their game. Oliver getting her own miss, putting that back up and in. What a challenge is it for Arkansas to at least get somewhat even on the boards against a team as physical and strong as Baylor? Well, they just have to figure out how to take control offensively. They can take control, try to get more offensive rebounds, but defensively, box out. <laughs> box out and get the rebounds because you'll watch Baylor and they do a great job. They've always done a great job of attacking the board. One person shoot, you see three, maybe four players go and get on the board. Nice little mini run here for Baylor, getting the ball down inside, either off the backboard. Nice look from Richards down inside to Egbo. Well, Baylor coming off of that USF win, that was a tough one for them. But I think as a team, it really helped them to, it helped them come back together quicker and make sure that they were able to get on that win and get on that other side. It'll be Arkansas free throws when we come back, as expected. Different styles. Good game.
You're watching the SEC on ESPN, and there you are looking at Dee Dee Richards on October 24th. Tamika suffered what looked like possibly a career-ending injury, and here she is back in the lineup. Well, it's great to see Dee Dee Richards back out, but you just said it. She suffered an injury October 24th, 38 days later. She got back on the court against USF. This is her first game back, but she had a phenomenal game. Four points, three rebounds, seven assists, one block, two steals. She is the reason that Baylor is what they are this year. Her experience, her energy, you can see that smile. She is the leader that keeps this show going. And in a practice collision with Moon Urson, who suffered a serious concussion and missed 10 days of her own, 38 days, first several days were spent in the hospital for Dee Dee Richards. Some of, not most of it, using a walker. She had no feeling from the knees down in both legs. And just an inspirational, remarkable recovery and a real blessing in this year when th so many things have gone wrong. That is truly something that's gone very right to see Dee Dee Richards back in a Baylor uniform. Well, it's scary not only from Dee Dee Richards' standpoint and her family, but even the coaches and, and the players. Like you said, Moon Urson was another player that she collided with and had to be out for 10 days, suffered just a concussion. But the remarkable recovery, just the way that Dee Dee Richards, they say the way that she fights, the way that she is as a person, she never gives up. And that attitude is what definitely got her in. They did not expect 38 days. They expected it to be longer, but her perseverance is what pushed through turnover by Baylor led to a big play here at this stage of the game. Queen Egbo just picked up her second personal foul. And she's the player that needs to stay on the court and that was something that Coach Mulkey said her growth is really about staying out of foul trouble. We need her to be on the court. She cannot afford to get in foul trouble. Halfway through the opening quarter, very quick start by Chelsea Dungy in Arkansas, responded to by Baylor, mostly by getting offensive rebounds and getting the ball back inside off of high screen and roll. Just on the floor now, Caitlin Bickle, six foot junior out of King Creek, Arkansas, uh, uh, Arizona, excuse me. Three pointer on the way, feeder set up and in. Moon Urson, that is the first three pointer that uh, Arkansas has hit, excuse me, Baylor has hit in a couple of games. Well, and right quickly I, at the other end, number 14, Mason with a miss. I think on the offensive end, Arkansas almost forces other teams that they play against to shoot more threes than they used to shooting. And when you get into that comfort, you get into Arkansas packing the paint and forcing other teams that maybe aren't used to shooting three to shoot more, more three. Person will go to the sideline, and speaking of Kim Mulkey's Baylor Bears, they were just 2 of 22 from three-point range. And when we spoke to Coach Mulkey, just the other day about uh, her team and you asked what was the biggest surprise for her team so far is that they'd shot it so poorly but Urson looked very comfortable there knocking down the three Barnum inside throws that off the front of the iron and Baylor will look to run but boy they control the backboards here comes Richards nobody picks her up slices through the defense and lays it up and in first basket by Dee Dee Richards and now 15 11 advantage for Baylor what a great move right there. You see Slocum was trying to set up to take a charge and Didi just slid through. That's what she's so good at. On the wave, Slocum lays that up and in. Look at Baylor running quickly to the other end and a foul is gonna be called. That goes against Jalen Mason wearing number 14 in white for Arkansas. Well, it's interesting when we talked to Coach Neighbors yesterday, he said it. If Baylor wants to get into a running match with us, Sorry, we Lord. would gladly take it. But that is something that this Arkansas team, they want to run. They want to get up and down the floor. Baylor, on the other end, they don't mind running, but their strength, I think, really comes from being able to set up the half-court offense and pound the ball down low. Dijanae Carrington, the 5'11 graduate transfer out of San Diego, but most notably Stanford University, up and good on the first free throw. The 22nd annual ACC Big Ten Challenge is on ESPN and the ESPN app, and we have a top 15 doubleheader on Tuesday. We start at Carver Hawkeye Arena with number three, Iowa, hosting number 14, North Carolina at 7.30 Eastern. Then it's fifth rank, the fifth rank fighting Illini against number six, Duke, at Cameron Indoor should be two wonderful games in the Sonic blockbuster. Turnover here for Arkansas and here comes Richards quickly out of the backcourt. Well, Pull up 15 footer not there. 
Interesting enough, Slocum had the shot on the other end. She should have taken it, but Coach Neighbors also talked about his team being almost a little bit too unselfish mm. and trying to get the ball when they're not taking the open shot that they have. Yeah, that was a really interesting point he made yesterday, again, with five players, five starters in double figures, and uh, take good shots. Crossover, pull-up jumper, not even close by Amber Ramirez, and it'll be Baylor basketball with 2.02 remaining in the opening quarter. Baylor now on a 15-5 run. They have done, they've controlled. You see, this is the set, this is the game. This is their game right here, being able to slow it down a little bit, pack the ball down low. Queen Agbo goes to the free throw line again. Sorry, DJ Carrington. So Carrington will get back to the free throw line. Foul called against Arkansas. What can Carrington bring to a team like Baylor? It was funny, Kim Mulkey said that Carrington came over and said to her in practice, it's all true. You, you really do emphasize defense here in Waco. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to be a big part of it is her defensive presence on there. But I think after a player like her, she sat out last year, she was injured. So she's trying to get back from an injury. She comes to a new team, trying to establish herself in a new program. We know how successful Baylor has been and, and the things that have made them successful. For her, she just has to figure out a way to kind of fill in the gaps and fi figure out where she needs to play. I think she's a great offensive player. Defensively, she's going to get better being in this system. And that would just help her. And that shot missed by Michaela Daniels, the 5'9 sophomore out of Maryland, being very aggressive at the offensive end. I guess that's a little bit redundant when it comes to Arkansas. And here comes Daniels quickly out of the backcourt again. Daniels, three-pointer, and Arkansas needed that, as you pointed out. Baylor was on a 15-5 run, and now Arkansas back within three. Michaela Daniels is that player that you will love to watch. Her, her as a freshman and, of course, now as a sophomore. But last year, just watching the poise and the confidence that her that she came in with. And you don't see a lot of freshmen, especially freshman point guards, that can come in and have that. But Coach Neighbor talked about, hey, she was a scorer in high school. and She was a, a big-time scorer in high school. So to be able to take that, come to this program, facilitate with the players that you have on the wing, getting the ball, but also being able to do her thing too. Baylor starting to do some damage at the free throw line, although that is missed by Dee Dee Richards. That foul was against Destiny Slocum, getting back to Daniels. Started all 32 games as a freshman, averaged nine points per game. And both free throws off the iron. And Arkansas taking it out of Michaela Daniels, that's what she does, she pushes the ball. She finds the open players, but I think as Arkansas, when you watch them play, when they move the ball, they find the open open players, get the open shot. Coach Neighbors was a little concerned coming into this game, talked about, hey, we have had slow starts in all the games that we've had, so we cannot afford to do that against Baylor. Bickle off the back of the iron and long rebound taken by Marquisha Davis, six foot sophomore out of McGee, Arkansas, wearing number one in white. Players collide. We've already had one very serious collision in practice. We don't want to have another of those. It'll be side out of bounds to Arkansas. 35.9 remaining in the opening quarter. Baylor currently ranked number four in the country. Arkansas at number 16. We like seeing the aggressiveness that Baylor has though. <laughs> High screen and roll knocked down by Michaela Daniels, and we're tied at 19. South Carolina currently number one in the country, lost earlier in the week at home, ending a 29-game winning streak to North Carolina State, but returned to favor on the road at Iowa State earlier today. Richards gets in the lane, and that's going to be a traveling violation. Baylor turns it over, and plenty of time for Arkansas to get a good look with 7.3 left. Well, at this point right now, D.D. Richards, you got to shake it off. You just got to play defense. Arkansas is going to come. They got five seconds left. Daniels on the dribble, up and under into the bottom of the iron. No foul is called. And a very, very good opening quarter, as we thought, between Baylor and Arkansas. And here we go. Dungy to the basket. And it's in. And then, of course, say Moon Urson on the side. Knockdown, Baylor versus Arkansas.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's, home for the holidays, and Geico. You could save even more by bundling home and car insurance. Back in Fayetteville, college basketball coming your way on ESPN out of the SEC. Chelsea Dungy playing with two personal fouls, misses that one. And uh, there's 4,000 people allowed in the building. Bud Walton Arena capacity officially 19,200. Health officials and university officials decided that 20% was about right. And Tamika, you know a lot about big college crowds down in Knoxville at the University of Tennessee. If not for COVID, this place would have been absolutely packed for a game between this emerging Arkansas team and the Baylor Bears, currently the 2019 NCAA champions. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, Coach Neighbors and Coach Mulk, you talked about being able to establish this game on both sides to be able to have something for the fan. This is not going to be the only time this team play. Right. Next year, they're going to continue to have this kind of matchup. They want to have the fans that come out. You see right there all the COVID guidelines that are being required for Arkansas to have fans. And it is a capacity of 4,000, and that's everybody in the building. That's just not 4,000 fans. Baylor on top now, 21 to 19. Queen Egbo had some early foul trouble, and Chelsea Dungy is playing with two personal fouls as well. She's on the wing now, one number 33 in white, looking inside for Smith, and Baylor's been careless with the ball. Yeah, but Arkansas has done a great job of being able to be in the right spot. The thing is, Arkansas, they're, they're getting the steals, they're making the right defensive play, but they're not executing they're not getting to the offensive offensive end and being able to make to penalize Baylor for the, the turnover. Baylor now with six turnovers and Arkansas not being able to execute on the offensive end. As far as field goal percentage is concerned, Arkansas currently seven of twenty, three of eight from outside the arc. Baylor's been getting to the free throw line. They are seven of seventeen so far from the floor and going to the free throw line will be another transfer. Amber Ramirez made 106 three-pointers last year record. She started her career at TCU. It's an experienced Arkansas Razorback team under Mike Neighbors. She played all 32 games last year and started as did Michaela Daniels and to speak nothing of Chelsea Dungy. Amber Ramirez, one of the splash sisters and now the splash sister for this Arkansas Razorback team, and she is a player that you can't afford to let go in because once she gets going, it doesn't matter if you have a hand in her face, she can shoot the ball lights out. Richards at the point, and an offensive foul is called away from the play. I think they got Dijanae Carrington for that, the Stanford transfer, and it'll go down as a turnover. That's turnover number seven for Baylor. got to do a better job of taking care of the ball. They got to do a better job of being able to get shots. We're not used to seeing this Baylor team at careless with the ball. And you can see Coach Mulkey on the sideline just frustrated with the turnovers. A lot of drive and kick, and there's Carrington returning the favor, working against Ramirez, lays that up and in. Vision at Carrington, a very gifted offensive player, only played five games last year at the beginning of the Stanford season, but averaged 15 points per game her last full year. That off the side of the iron and deflected out of bounds over the top off of Marquisha Davis. It'll be Baylor basketball. And Jeanette Carrington does such a great job being able to see. You no, know, she came in. Defense was not her thing, but she's <laughs> learning how to play defense under this Baylor system. And you see just being able to take the ball to the basket strong. Baylor is long, physical, talented, and very well coached, obviously, and willing to get down and play defensively. They've led the nation four years in a row in opponents field goal percentage, and currently they're holding opponents, I know it's a small sample, to 27% efficiency or lack thereof. Long rebound comes out to Dungy. Arkansas will reset, but I use that term loosely. <laughs> Resets don't take very long, Tamika. Well, Dungy attacking down three. inside using the offhand. Nice play by Dungy. Very nice. And that's what I was going to say. Chelsea Dungy just does a great job. Arkansas did a great job, though, that time spreading the floor and giving her the space to drive. But Baylor comes back with the finish. Dungy now with eight, leading the way. Daniels with it. Dungy can make the three. Working against Smith down inside. Count the basket and look for Dungy to complete the three point play and get into double figures. Well, when you watch 
Chelsea Dungey, you already know when she puts the ball on the rack, she is going all the way in for the drive. She does a great job of using her body, get to the free throw line 9.4 times a game. Her game, she's going to the free throw line. So if you're blocking her, you can't set off of her because she can knock down a three. And, and you can't she's... get you close because she takes you to the basket. So you got to find that middle ground of how you can guard Chelsea Dungey. And her head coach, Mike Neighbors, when he talked to us the other day about Dungey, said she's much improved athletically and in terms of her fitness and her speed and lateral movement and uh, is doing a much better job at the defensive end as that free throw rattles in and out. She spent a lot of time talking to Kelsey Plum about being much more of a pro, if you will, and you know all about that in terms of taking care of yourself 24 hours a day. Well, that's important you mentioned Kelsey Plum. She's a player or she's a player in the WNBA, but she's a player that Coach Neighbor coach University of Washington. She lights out all of that. But one of the things that my Coach Neighbor talked about with his team is having her talk to not just Chelsea Dungy, but all of the players. It had really set the tone for the professional development for her players. Another live ball turnover. Kim Mulkey's not going to be happy about this one. Daniels with a layup, and she'll look to complete the three-point play. That foul was on Dijanae Carrington. So much poise, so much confidence. Knock down and one right there with Kayla Daniels. She's the name that you need to watch because nine points right now, three rebounds. She's a player that you're going to have to watch in the next couple years. Arkansas got out to the quick early lead and then a 15 to 5 run by Baylor gave the Bears just a little bit of first quarter separation and underway here in the second 657 remaining. Arkansas leads at 28-25. That foul on Jalen Mason number 14 and it's interesting she was injured last year but I remember Coach Neighbor talking a lot of great things just about how positive she's the leader of their team from the sideline a player that he's really, really relied on. So having her come back in the lineup, excited about getting her back out here. It's good to see her playing. It's not, not necessarily fouling, but it's good to see her on the floor. Did not play last year. Average eight points a game in the previous year when she was healthy and a 38% three free throw shooter. Excuse me, 38% shooter from outside the arc. It's <laughs> destiny. I was going to say. I was going to say, 38% free throw shooter. I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote that down because it was so good and so inaccurate. <laughs> Slocum, uh, Arkansas is not taking advantage here, Tamika, at the free throw line. They've been struggling a little bit, but the thing about Arkansas is that you can have a tail of two halves, a tail of four quarters, but a tail of two halves in the way that they play. Dee Dee Richards off the back of the iron, and Baylor in some foul trouble individually with Egbo and also as a team early bonus here in the second quarter for Arkansas. Quick attack of the basket and an offensive foul is called against Aaron Barnum as Arkansas continues to look to go up and down as fast as they can, averaging 96 points per game. And Carrington stepping in and taking the charge. So we've seen, it's interesting, we talked about defense with Coach Mulkey, and we've seen Carrington step up on the defensive end. We've seen what she can do on the offensive end. And one thing about it is, we have not even begun to see how good this young lady can be. Shout out all last year, we talked about that earlier. She's still trying to figure out her flow in the game. Hannah Guster, the six foot five freshman out of Dallas, called for the offensive foul, doing some early work in the post and ruled that she had pushed off down inside as Kim Mulkey, and that'll go down as another turnover. You look at the totals right now, Baylor with nine turnovers, five for Arkansas, and it's Arkansas that wants to play much faster. Baylor trying to play in their half-court offense, but the post players are the ones that are putting a little bit too much, too much body on the Arkansas players. They got to figure out a way to be able to post up but not get fouled. Dungey on the handle, outside to Slocum, who attacks the basket. Look for a bounce, not there. Rebound is taken by Baylor, and they too will look to run quickly to Richards. Good skip pass across the defense. Sarah Andrews looking for the three. That off the back of the iron. Offensive rebound. And Mike Neighbors talked to us the other day, and he said, we've got to get all the 50-50 balls. We've got to get the long rebounds. And right here, Baylor gets another look at it and takes full advantage. That getting knocked down from the perimeter by Carrington. 
Boy, how fast at the other end. Barnum misses that. Baylor going to take a breath right now and get set up. You know, it's interesting. Every single time the ball gets in, inserted down low on the Baylor side, Arkansas will send an additional guard to the post to help out. Good attack from the weak side. Heartbreak. Harrington offensive rebound, and she will get back to the free throw line. Right now, Baylor having their way on the offensive boards. Well, that's one thing that Coach talked about, Coach Neighbor talked about. We have to also keep Baylor off the board with the size that they have. They've got to turn around, put a body on somebody, and box them out. That's the only way that they're going to be able to stay close on the, on the, off, on the rebound. First free throw is up and good for Carrington. Want to remind you, Tuesday at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. We'll have the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff top 25 rankings. Reese and the guys will break them down from top to bottom and have a live interview with committee chairman Gary Barta. Imagine Alabama will play a big part. Talk about Clemson, Notre Dame, and does Coastal Carolina get into the conversation? Slocum working down inside, and a foul is going to be called, and it'll be two free throws coming to Arkansas. Arkansas does a good job attacking the basket, but it really starts with Chelsea Dungeon. She starts the game aggressive. She forces everybody else to go. We'll step aside. Free throws for the Razorbacks when we come back to Fayetteville. Thank you very much. And Rebecca, as usual, absolutely spot on. 26 to 12 on the backboard, 7 to 1 offensive rebound advantage to Baylor, 9 2 second chance points. That's why they've got the number they do. They have been struggling offensively. Step back, not there. Rebound taken in traffic by Destiny Slocum. Well, the one thing that we haven't seen is Arkansas being able to take advantage. They are doing a good job on the offensive end, and Coach Landers talked about the thing that Arkansas is doing really well, but they're not being, they're not able to knock down the shot. They're getting to the free throw line. They've missed four free throws so far. What more can they do? Dungy off the side of the iron, quickly for the rebound, and that's ruled off of number four, Barnum, and it will be Baylor basketball. Baylor last year before the season was ended because of COVID, 28-2, 17-1 in the Big 12 Conference. Big 12 champs for the 10th straight year. In the last decade in the Big 12, Kim Mulkey's Baylor Bears are an unbelievable 170 wins against just eight losses in a very good conference that maybe just got better with a new head coach at Texas. Yes, and you know, one thing that you know is Kim Mulkey Talked to her yesterday about just even her coaching journey and how she got to the yeah. point of being such an amazing coach, even though she was like, I don't want to give all the credit to myself. The players that I've had, the coaching staff that I've had, but she had developed the vision. She has put her vision down and has found people and players to fit the vision that she has. And that's where you see 21st season, you look at her record, I mean, 1,000th win for Baylor against USF. There's a lot of great things that are going. And then of course, I mean, we can't leave out the Hall of Fame for yeah. Coach Markey and, and just all the things that she's been able to accomplish. But the players have bought into a system. They have bought into the way that she wants to play. And they have bought into each other. You can tell the way that they play. Fastest coach in history to 600 wins. There's a little bit of a malfunction here courtside at Bud Walton. And speaking of Kim Mulkey, she told us a wonderful story about when her All-American and National Championship won two national championships.
for Leon Barmore at Louisiana Tech had no intention of being a coach. She wanted to go be a CEO. She wanted to take over the <laughs> world. She said, I want to travel the world. And the president of the university and her mentor, Leon Barmore, said, no, we, we think we've got plans for you. Spent 15 years at her alma mater. And then Baylor came calling a very strong push, five-year contract. And now 20-plus years later, she will uh, join you and an unbelievable class, Kobe Bryant, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, into the Naismith Hall of Fame. And congratulations. That is a, a much-deserved honor. A, an easy choice, Tamika, I think. There is Kim Mulkey and Tamika Ketchings. Your uh, resumes are remarkable. Thank you. And I'm just honored to go in with the five that we that were going in. And, you know, you brought up Kobe Bryant. And, and both of us, she said it on the call. She's like, every time I even say his name, just tears start forming. And, you know, this class, I mean, it's it just... It's, for me, it's an honor to be among some of the greatest of the greats in, in both the men's and women's game, coaches, and and all of that. So I'm just honored to, to be a lot total athlete. I'm just honored to be alongside of you and all the things that you've accomplished in 21 years. Well, Kobe Bryant, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, can't forget Eddie Sutton, Rudy Tomjanovich, <laughs> Kim Mulkey, and you, Tamika, Barbara Stevens, and longtime FIBA executive Patrick Bonham and make up the 2020 class and as of now that ceremony is scheduled for May 13 through 15 if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you just saw the Destiny Slocum trying to do a, a trick shot I believe. I don't know if it's a trick shot or a trick pass but uh, she'll go to the free throw line. Free throws are big in this game. Neither team particularly efficient. Baylor so far 8 for 12 and maybe it's more important if you will for Arkansas when they do get to the line. Only 7 of 12 so far from the stripe as Dee Dee Richards comes back on along with uh, Jordan Oliver. Slocum spent the last couple of years as we talked about at Oregon State but uh, she and Mike Neighbors have a long history together. She originally committed to coach Neighbors when he was the head coach at Washington. Reopened her recruiting, went to Maryland and then reached out to coach Neighbors when he went to Arkansas and said no give it some time. We need to build this program a little bit. He's built it up to the point where they won 24 games last year and here is Slocum to close out her career with the coach that she basically started with when he was at Washington. Well, it's, it's interesting because if you look at this, Mike Navy and what he's been able to build on this uh, Arkansas, the players that have come in, Slocum, a lot of the things that you, when you hear him talk, he talked about relationships and the relationship that he's able to build. But you look at, I mean, if you talk to any coach, the relationship that they're able to build with the players that they're recruiting, that is the big part of it. He started talking to Slocum when she was young, junior. You know, she basically committed as a junior, came in senior year and was like, you know what, I want to open up my option. And that's how she ended up at Maryland. But the relationship has kept them going. He was like, you know, it's not like we stayed in contact. You always end up in the, in the same places and you end up having that relationship and being able to talk to people. Power basketball down inside after the basket at the other end by Destiny Slocum. Right on cue, Hannah Gusters powers her way. Boy, good quick attack. What good movement that time by Davis, number one and right, right to the front of the rim. Baylor in some foul trouble. Arkansas has been in the bonus for the better part of the last three or four minutes. Haven't really taken advantage of that. And five players in a Baylor Bear uniform now with two fouls. Well, Baylor has to be careful on the defensive end, but on the offensive end, that was a great setup. They set a double screen up top to allow Marquisha Davis to get to the, to the, to the basket. Dijanae Carrington misses that battle for it. Offensive rebound one after another. The rebound numbers adding up. We talked about the advantage for Baylor. Much longer, much more physical than is Arkansas. And they've had their way so far inside. Offensive Arkansas. rebounds now eight to only two for Arkansas. The Baylor Bears taking full advantage. Arkansas is not going to out-rebound. They're not going to out-jump Baylor. They've got to figure out a way to put a body on those players and push them out. You know, one philosophy we always had, and I remember from, from college even to the pro, if you don't get the rebound, at least make sure your person doesn't get the rebound. So you turn around, put a body, you face-box them out, whatever you need to do to allow them to not get the rebound. 
Well, Mike Neighbors knew, of course, and he said it. He said, look, this is not a chess match. They have more queens, more rooks, <laughs> more knights than we do. This, this is more like a boxing match, and we've got a puncher's chance if we can make shots and get our share of 50-50 balls. And, and right now, not so much on that. Nice play off the inbound. Caitlin Bickle, six-foot junior, able to put that ball up and in. Haven't seen much of Queen Egbo because of the early foul trouble. Nice little slip screen, but help from the weak side. Break by Arkansas. Ball bounces out. Here's Ramirez. Attacking with the offhand. Lays it up and in. Layups and threes. That's Mike Neighbor's offense. Well, I think that's a good philosophy right now. And knowing that Baylor is in foul trouble, you have to get the ball to the basket. If you're not getting the actual basket and the finish, you're getting to the free throw line off of fouls. And Baylor can't afford to get continue to, to get in foul trouble. Look at the total number of fouls. There have been a lot of whistles. Arkansas leading it by two inside of a minute remaining. Shot clock, still plenty of time. Wild look and very, very active is Slocum at both ends of the floor. Nice little drop pass, but fumbled away. The officials will talk it over, and it will be Baylor basketball off the Arkansas turnover. Marquisha Davis couldn't control that pass down along the baseline that time from Jalen Mason. Arkansas continue to try to get to the basket, the sh outside shot. Now, you don't really need to take a lot of outside shots. You can get the ball to the basket. Baylor 13 of 35 so far from the floor. Arkansas 13 of 32. Baylor 2 of 6 from outside the arc. Neither team particularly good from the free throw line. Well, that's an interesting stat. Arkansas had 20 points in the paint. So you think about the 20 points that they have in the paint, and you look at the foul that Baylor, the, the foul trouble that Baylor's in right now, that is a big thing. You got Smith with two fouls. You got Richard with two fouls. You got Urson with two fouls. Andrew and Egbo all with two fouls. You're already talking about Baylor. They have a limited bench. They don't have that many players to put out on the floor anyway. So foul trouble, they have got to figure out a way to control themselves on the offensive end or on the defensive end and keep players in front of them. Shot clock and game clock separated by just a couple of tenths. Drive, kick, three-pointer on the way by Carrington. No, offensive rebound is lost. A couple of seconds left, and here comes Daniels from midcourt and misses that one. And we knew we would have a good basketball game here in Fayetteville, and we have indeed. Number four, Baylor, and number 16, Arkansas, 38-36 is the Razorbacks' lead. And with that, halftime here at Bud Walt. Let's send it to the studio. You're watching Feast Week on ESPN, presented by Lowe's, and a good one here in Fayetteville. Number four, Baylor, and number 16, Arkansas. Arkansas Razorbacks on top by a score of 38-36 to 36 with Hall of Famer Tamika Ketchings. I'm Paul Sunderland, and Tamika, we talked about the styles being so different, and it kind of played out because the Baylor Bears physical, strong, and beat up Arkansas on the backboards. Well, one of the great things that they did, the offensive rebound, you see, you'll see this possession, but you'll see it all in the first half. All they did, Baylor, get on the board, get on the board, get on the board some more, and that's what Arkansas had really struggled. They have not done a good job. But on the flip side, what did Arkansas do great? Well, it started with this young lady, Chelsea Dungy, putting her head down and getting to the basket. But she started it, and everybody else continued it. You see, Baylor had five players in foul trouble just trying to defend that Arkansas back. And you look at some of the important numbers, Baylor, no surprise there, although Arkansas has got to find a way to do better, particularly on their defensive board, offensive rebound, second chance points. Dungy was good. And Dijanae Carrington, I know it's a small sample size, only the third game of the year for the senior transfer out of Stanford, but uh, she led the way with 11 points, and that was vitally important for Baylor to be trailing by only two at the half. Well, without Carrington and without the offensive rebound for Baylor, they would not be in a situation that they're in. So, Dijanae Carrington came out. She has done her job and her role in this first half. Now we have and, to play in the second half. And did a wonderful job of getting to the free throw line where she did most of her work, a perfect six for six. 
some of the other numbers. Arkansas shooting 41% from the floor. Baylor at only 36%. And this is the first time these teams have met since the NCAA tournament in 2015. Mike Neighbors leading Arkansas back to prominence, coming back home where he was an assistant here before he went out and built Washington into a national power. 24 and eight last year, 10 and six. And the best season that Arkansas has had since joining the SEC and we're underway here in the second half. Well, it'll be Another interesting to see what adjustments are made on both sides. Arkansas, what are they going to do to keep Baylor off the board? And then Baylor, how are they going to keep the players that they have in foul trouble out of foul trouble, making sure that they're doing the little things, keeping players in front of them? And Baylor has to take care of the ball. Both teams really have to take care of the ball. Yeah, turnovers now, 11-7. Baylor, that was a look inside to Nalisa Smith, number one in green, the preseason Big 12 Player of the Year who's been pretty darn quiet in the opening half, four points, a couple of rebounds. Drive and kick, three-pointer on the way for Taylor Thomas, 6'1 senior who started the game, but uh, like Nalisa Smith for Baylor, she was pretty quiet. We were talking about that during the break. Well, Taylor Thomas is somebody that they need that Arkansas has relied on and although she's not one of the prominent scorers and the people that you're looking at to score for the Razorback team, she plays her role really, really well. The big thing that they're missing right now is the rebound. She only has one rebound in the game in the first half. She averages eight rebounds. They have got to get her, but well, she's got to figure out a way to box out and get some rebounds. Queen Egbo picked up a couple of early fouls and Kim Mulkey and Baylor making a concerted effort to get the ball down inside. Nice response that time by Chelsea Dungy after the opening make by uh, Dee Dee Richards, her first basket of the game for Baylor. We saw Melissa Thomas, Melissa Smith got that, that basket. That's important. Baylor trying to figure out a way to get her going. She's that player, as you said. Everybody's keen in on her. When you see any of the post players, when they get the ball down low, I said this in the first half, you will see one, two, maybe even three players from the Arkansas Razorback team that will surround that player. So Smith does a great job of just finishing and powering up. Officials have had to spend a little bit of time at the scorer's table working with the clock. There's a loose wire that created an inadvertent horn. So the teams will, at least for the moment, we hope, head to the sideline. That foul was called on Trinity Oliver. We'll step aside. We'll straighten things out. We'll get, get the electrician in the building here at Budwall, <laughs> <laughs> Baylor and Arkansas. Save even more by bundling home and car insurance. We've sorted things out here at Bud Walton Arena. Thanks for joining us in Fayetteville on V Week. And that's going to be an offensive foul called on Dungy. That's a big call early. That is her third personal foul against one of the storing, scoring stars for Arkansas. They're number 33 in white. She picks up her third. She averages 18 points a game. Well, it'll be interesting to see what Coach Neighbor does as far as keeping her in the game. This is a tight game, so it's not necessarily what they need from Dungy in this moment. They need her to be on the floor in the fourth quarter. That's a great point, and I think it's going to be a very difficult, you know, she's an experienced player now. She's a redshirt senior. She's been around the program. She's been around college basketball for a long time. And I'll ask you this. How long did it take you to learn to play with foul trouble? <laughs> I think I'm still learning, even though I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it's one of those things, you know, her and Coach Neighbors have such a great relationship and one of the things is he can he trust her. I mean, you didn't see anything happen, you didn't see anybody on the bench scramble to, to run to the scores table to get her out. So she knows what she has to do to make sure. It's almost like you just have to allow, you have to step back and sometimes you just gotta take yourself out of position to not get in not get called for a foul. Yeah, there's gotta be a lot of trust there and there certainly is between Coach Neighbors and Chelsea Dungy. Dungy was uh, second team all SEC last year when she averaged 17 points, five rebounds. That ball flipped up and it's gonna be another foul and the fouls are really starting to add up. Already three team fouls on Baylor and uh, 7.35 remaining in the third. Well, 
this is on Egbo. This is going to be her third foul. So, once again, you look at from the Baylor side, they already have 10 players. All 10 players that they have available have played, have stepped into the game and have played thus far. So, it's going to be important on both sides to stay out of foul trouble. Well, they're already will in go foul to... trouble. <laughs> they're already they in are. foul trouble. <laughs> they are indeed. They are indeed. I mean, Baylor, look. They've won three national championships under Kim Mulkey. You just look at the numbers. They are not a good, and I don't use this adjective very often. They are a great defensive team. But you still have to play defense without fouling. And right now, that has been a problem for this Baylor team so far very, very early in the season. Richards with it, giving some space, and an offensive foul is called down inside, and that might be on Egbo as well. Richards holding the ball. We'll see and sort that out, who they call that foul on. Egbo's going to the sideline, and Caitlin Bickle, who played five or six uh, minutes for Kim Mulkey. Yeah, that is four on Queen Egbo. And remember, she's coming off a huge game, 25 points, 11 rebounds at USF earlier and in the week. And that's such a frustrating thing when you have such a good game and you come in. But Arkansas had done their game plan. This is their game plan. Their game plan is three. But you see McKay again. That's what they do very well. And their game plan is to get the ball to the basket, try to get Baylor in foul trouble. And they have executed the game plan to a T. Smith down inside. Richards has hit one shot from the perimeter and now another. And what a leader. D.D. Richards is for this Baylor basketball team. And after the make, head coach Kim Mulkey immediately calls a quick timeout. So, so will we. We'll step aside, as we thought, a very good one. Baylor and Arkansas with the Razorbacks leading by three. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by GEICO. You could save even more by bundling home and car insurance. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. And while we've got a moment, teams here coming back out on the floor. I want to remind you our Week 13 Monday Night Football matchup as Josh Allen and the AFC East leading Buffalo Bills taking on the 49ers still in the NFC playoff hunt. Five and six after their big win against the Los Angeles Rams, which broke my heart, at least temporarily, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ABC as well this week. ESPN Desportes and the ESPN app. Our coverage begins with Monday night countdown at 6 o'clock. Back to it. Arkansas with a 45-42 lead. Queen Egbo, big story there on the sideline with four personal fouls as Amber and Ramirez. Little step pullback, jump shot, and the lead now is five. And quickly at the other end, Dijanae Carrington, who had 11 in the first half and quickly contributing in the second. Well, Carrington is the reason that Baylor has been able to stay in this game. She's a player that she understands her role right now in this game. With Egbo out on the bench, they got to get more scores. Moon Urson, the 5'8 senior out of Louisiana with a quick basket. Baylor will run. And they can run. There's a good basketball team, and uh, that's going to be it. Violation on the perimeter. Chelsea Dungy playing with her own foul trouble. That's a big story now. Tied at 47, 6'11 remaining in the third. Queen Egbo on the sideline with four personal fouls. Of course, she had to sit, but now Chelsea Dungy has played several minutes with three personal fouls. Interesting stretch in this game. Dungy almost got her fourth there. That was not particularly well advised, but the step back jump shot knocked down by Richards, who's finding some offensive rhythm here in the second half. Well, it's interesting. You know, Arkansas right now has four players in double digits. You got Slocum, you got Ramirez, you got Dungey, you got Daniel in double digit scoring. Then on the other side, you look at just Carrington is basically carrying the team right now, Baylor, right now. And, and you know, hopefully Dee Dee Smith or Dee can step up. Dee Dee Richards can step up and try to get more involved in the offense, too. She's done such a great job of being a facilitator. But with Alyssa Smith not really scoring down low, with Ed Bowles sitting on the bench, who you need to, who had, like you said, a terrific game last game, they've got to find more scores. The thing that has kept them in the game is Carrington and offensive rebound. But they've got to get other players to step up. Arkansas, they continue to do what they do best. They spread the floor. They get the extra, make the extra pass. The players step up and knock down shots, and they're getting to the free throw line. 
And Baylor's got to continue to play defense, but they better do it without fouling. They got to adjust to the way this game is being called. Carrington pass into the corner. Urson will look at a three-pointer and buries that. Remember that uh, Arkansas was in the bonus at about the seven-minute mark of the second quarter, and here they are already in the bonus with a lifetime left in the third. Bodies flying around in the possession arrow. Ball will go to the Baylor Bears back on top just like that, 52-49 to 49 after Arkansas led by five. Another question you asked before was what would Arkansas do with Egbo sitting on the bench? Would they be able to make a run? And what you've seen is Baylor's actually stepped up on their defensive end and been able to create a little bit on the offense. Great post up right there. Carrington being able to push the player up just a little bit, just enough to give her space to catch the ball and go straight up. This has been a nice little mini run for the Baylor Bears. They have been really good offensively. Richards, as you said, Dijanae Carrington finding some good space, working up the, line, the lane, throw over the top for Kim Mulkey, and now Baylor on top, 52 to 49. Early in the season, Baylor ranked number four. Arkansas ranked at number 16. Arkansas four and one, lost to Maryland. Baylor coming off a hard-fought win down at USF, 67 to 62. Carrington loses the handle. I don't think people understand. USF is a good team. You saw them, they knocked off Mississippi State last night. And they have really good players. Their coach, Jose, I mean, he has, he has the team, kind of when you talk about a Kim Mulkey, the vision that you have for the team, the type of players that you have coming into your program. That is what it takes. Miss, missed layup at one end, and then the ball thrown away. Turnover by Baylor, but still on top by five. 54-49 at Arkansas. Number one is laugh. You should laugh every day. Number two is think. You should spend some time in thought. And number three is you should have your emotions moved to tears. Could be happiness or joy. But think about it. If you laugh, you think, and you cry, that's a full day. That's a heck of a day. Jimmy V Week here on ESPN, of course, during basketball season to benefit the V Foundation. Impactful, unforgettable, particularly during these COVID times. Cancer research, cancer patients, staying away from hospitals a little. My, I lost my mother to leukemia. My, my sister is a breast cancer survivor and, and just uh, very, very important to give whatever you can, whenever you can to support cancer research generally and, and here at ESPN, the V Foundation. Wow. Baylor on top 54-49 with Tamika Ketchings. Attack of the basket there, thrown up and in. Boy, did Arkansas, it seemed like, need that by Amber Ramirez. Definitely, and you know, one thing I'll just say, I, I love what Jimmy V said about, you know, laugh, think, emotion, so yeah. being able to cry and every single day, especially during this period, you know, every single day, being able to have those moments and, and thinking, you know, laugh. Uh, I think I, I would love to say I laugh every day, and hopefully I think every day, and, and being able to be moved to tears because of just the hard time that people are don't, going through right now. So Jimmy V, it's, it's, uh, his legacy forever lives, lives on. Very well said, Tamika. Thank you very much. Paul Sunderland with Tamika Ketchings, Hall of Famer and all-time great. And a good attack of the basket once again. Baylor looks pretty smooth here offensively. Is that a surprise to you with Egbo on the sideline with all that foul trouble? Well, it's interesting because I feel like Baylor is still in, they're still trying to figure out what they're going to be. You know, it's hard when you, you lose the player that they lost last year and, and the inside presence. And what you see, and, and one thing that you're here. Coach Mulkey does not necessarily play freshman, so it's not until your sophomore, junior year that you really are able to develop and get on the floor. Here, they're in a different situation with only 10 players. Dungy continues to drive to the basket, continue to make an effect, and you know, it's interesting, you see somebody that's in foul trouble, three fouls, still being as aggressive as she is on the offensive end, not worried about getting offensive charges. She is really, really good at getting to the basket and using her body to be able to either A, make the basket or get to the free throw line and or make both, make the, make the shot and get the free throw. 
completes the three-point play. Now uh, Dungy with 15 points on 6 of 12 shooting. Make a great point about the potential offensive foul. You know that Coach Mulkey and her assistants are going to be talking about that because Dungy is going to continue to attack. She's got to watch out for the weak side defender. Richards feeling it in the second half, although an air ball there. She was scoreless in the first half. She has half a dozen. And here comes Slocum quickly into the front court. Arkansas continue to try to figure out ways to attack and get to the basket. Holding foul on the perimeter, and it's going to be more free throws coming. That foul is called on Sarah Andrews, a 5'6 freshman out of Irving, Texas. Number one point guard recruit for the Baylor Bears. Free throws have been a big story. Arkansas 14 of 19 overall. Baylor 8 of 12, but Arkansas much better in the second half in terms of efficiency looking to add to a perfect five for five and the first up and good by a very good shooter Dungy a 75 percenter yeah, Dungy does such as I mean she knows how to get to the free throw line we talked a little bit earlier in the game just about probably the the one area that she needs to work on is her her mid-range game and you know you see right there she's about to do a one-two dribble pull up Arkansas, perfect from the line, thanks to Dungy, as she will sit for a while. And now, again with those three fouls, you would imagine she'll sit for the remainder of the third quarter and be completely ready to go and, and freewheeling for the fourth. Well, it'll be interesting because I don't think Dungy came out of the game because of foul trouble. I think Dungy came out of the game to give her a rest. So huh. Coach Neighbor might be resting her for a little bit, and she might be back sooner than you know. Very important and aggressive attack by Marquisha Davis for the basket. And back and forth we go. Baylor trailed by five, got back up on top, and now Arkansas with a mini run of their own to lead 60 to 54 with 209 remaining in the third. We're gonna call Burnham on that foul against Melissa Smith. And, uh, Smith is a player that she's on a lot of preseason award list and waiting to figure out a way to get her going. She's got six points right now, but that's not enough for this Baylor team. Daniels looking to add to an 11-0 run. Air ball there, and here comes Richards out of the back court. Eggbo has been out for almost all of this third quarter after she picked up quickly her third and then her fourth. Ball deflected out of bounds off of Melissa Smith and Baylor and out of bounds. There is Eggbo, number 25. And speaking of that, I've mentioned it a couple of times, but it bears repeating. Dungy right back in. Eggbo had 25 points against USF to go along with 11 rebounds and three blocks. Well, great players cannot afford to be sitting on the bench when their team need them. And Agbo, it will be, she will be a great player. Right now, she's just trying to figure out, she's trying to fill it out. And Ramirez steps in, she hit knocked down that shot. Arkansas is feeling good right now. It started with Dungy, she kind of got the team going, and everybody else has been feeding off of it. Four players in double figures now trying to get Smith going. Misses at point blank range. But a foul is going to be called inside against Barnum, and it'll be two free throws coming to Melissa Smith, the 6'2 junior out of Converse, Texas. Big 12 honorable mention all and honorable mention all American last year, 14 and 8. But so far in this evening in Fayetteville, it's been a struggle for her. Well, Igbo went out earlier in the game at seven, well, third quarter, seven minutes and 29 seconds. and. Arkansas has been 21-14 Taylor Thomas coming back on now for Mike Neighbors and Arkansas. Taylor Thomas has had one shot attempt in this game, which is unbelievable considering she's been on the court for <laughs> over 30 or over 25 minutes and she has not been able to find a way to include herself in the offense and even rebounding I mean she she's a player that they rely on to do more things and she hasn't really been able to produce yet yeah, that's one of the points I was going to make to make she averages eight rebounds a game and you still look at the rebound differential 37 to 23 particularly on the offensive rebounding situation for Baylor that's kept him in the game you would think Taylor Thomas would be very very important in that phase of the game 
Free throw off the back of the iron. The rebound taken by Davis. And wasting no time. Look at that. Marquisha Davis off the board and all the way to the other end. Arkansas has come alive. Smith missing down inside. Offensive rebound. Egbo's back on. See the Kim Mulkey feeling a little bit maybe that this game was getting away. And in spite of the four fouls, Queen Egbo, number 25, back in. And immediately gets an offensive rebound. Where Over the saw, top, that's going to be a foul called on Thomas. Yeah, you saw Ken Malky talking a little bit earlier to Egbo, trying to figure out. Egbo was probably pleading her case to get back in the game, and she's got to be very, very careful. Here you see Taylor Thomas will get called for this over the back. Yeah, Mike Neighbors didn't like the call, but uh, <laughs> what coach does, really good effort that time by Thomas, but clearly <laughs> over the top of the Baylor player is time winding down here in the third. Baylor goes straight back to Egbo. Boy, not Beautiful. a lot of spacing, and now Arkansas with some numbers. I was going to say Arkansas is going to pull it back out, but that's sacrilege in Fayetteville if you play for Mike Neighbors instead off the front of the iron, and now Baylor will hold for the final shot. Well, she looked like she wanted to pass it at first, and then nobody was open, so of course you <laughs> take the shot. Double team down inside. Egbo turns, face is not there. And with the seconds winding down, that'll be the end of the third quarter. And a very nice and important run for Arkansas to make a leading at 64-57 after three. Yes, and can't say enough about just what this Arkansas team has been able to do. You see Ramirez takes it to left hand, and then of course Dungy comes back and puts it in. Arkansas on top, 65-57. Back in Fayetteville, Arkansas closes out the third quarter on a 15-3 run. Baylor turns cold. They go one for their last eight from the floor, and we start the final 10-minute quarter with number 16, Arkansas, on top of Baylor, 64-57. to With Tamika Catchings, I'm Paul Sutton. Thank you so much for joining us. And the lead continues to grow. That is a play that you cannot afford to leave wide open and Ramirez with the rebound. One for one from the three-point line, but this is that's where she gets her bread and butter. We've got Moon Nursing headed to yeah, the free throw yep. line. Moon Orson with twelve. Person with 12 points getting to the free throw line. Free throws going to be vitally important for anybody trying to creep back. And right now, Arkansas has been doing a wonderful job from the offensive standpoint. And Baylor trying to figure out what they need to do to get back in the game, hoping that with Queen Egbo back on the floor, that will give them a little bit more momentum. But I think what they need to do is Kind of take a little bit of what Arkansas is doing. I mean, attack the basket and get to the free throw line. They have slashers just like the Arkansas Razorback team does. But I think, you know, the, the, obviously the biggest difference right now is three-point shooters. What you see, what Arkansas has, they have Slocum out there. They got Michaela Daniels out there. They got Ramirez. They got Dungy. They have players that can shoot, the, shoot and knock down the three. That ball right at the front of the rim, a tough try by Slocum among the trees. Egbo posting up down inside, has played most of this game with foul trouble. That rims in and out, and the rebound taken by Taylor Thomas, and quickly a foul is called. Baylor has been in foul trouble seemingly most of this game. Egbo goes to the sideline. And she's fouled out. I thought they called that on her going over the top of uh, Taylor Thomas. So very unfortunate for the Baylor Bears. Egbo coming off a huge game. A six foot three junior out of Houston will have to sit. Her playing time has been really limited throughout the course of the evening because of foul trouble. You could just sense the frustration that she has right now. And even from Kim Mulkey's standpoint, talked about a third quarter. 
you see Egbo pleading with her to, to put her in the floor, put her on the floor and give her the opportunity to play. But you gotta be smarter than that. You can't even afford to really go in and get rebounds unless you have wide open opportunity. Nice pass by Slocum down inside to Thomas who could not handle it. And a break for Baylor coming the other way. Dee Dee Richards down inside. Excuse me, that was uh, Melissa Smith. And they have tried to establish her throughout the course of this evening and finally getting the job done down inside, Tamika. Well, great job right there, Melissa Smith gets on the low side. For whatever reason, Chelsea Dungy dropped or popped to the high side to play defense and gives her just enough space to be able to catch. Doesn't matter how many people you bring at that point in time, she's too close to the basket. Tom, uh, Smith does a great job of catching the ball and finishing with power. Been a close game throughout, tied at 19 after the opening quarter, 38-36, as the teams went into the locker room, and then Arkansas again finished on that 15-3 run to take a seven-point advantage into the final period, but a nice little response by Baylor at the offensive end. Smith completes the three-point play, and it's a five-point game just like that. Dungy playing downhill, and she's going to be called for the offensive foul. Wow, that's her fourth personal. Oh, that was a... Uh... That was the play right there, looking at having Chelsea Dungy on the floor. Because she either puts her head down and gets to the basket or shoots the three and does not really look for that mid-range shot, she puts herself in an awkward situation, or really it's a, it's a bad situation to put herself in because once she starts dribbling, her focus is getting to the basket and not really being able to see the court vision. And who was it? None other than Dee Dee Richards, the reigning National Defensive Player of the Year that picked up that offensive foul while guarding Dungy. Ramirez down the lane, lays that up, not there. And the ball deflected out of bounds by Urson. And it'll be uh, Razorbacks basketball. Just underway here in the fourth. A lot on the line historically for Mike Neighbors and Arkansas. Yeah, Dungy goes out to take a seat on the bench. And Neighbors understand that he has to have her available at the end of this quarter, not necessarily at the beginning. You just saw what happened with Egbo being in the game. You can't afford to have that. Ramirez looks for the quick three-pointer, not there, long rebound. And Baylor with an opportunity trying to kick ahead, and good defense getting back are the Razorbacks and number 23, Amber Ramirez. Coming right back on is Jalen Mason, who missed last year because of injury. A pretty deep Arkansas team, much, much more talented than when Mike Neighbors first arrived. Now in his fourth year, he's really built a strong, nationally recognized basketball program here in Fayetteville. And it's funny just, because he was talking about just from the defensive end. He said, now you guys know I, I recruit offensive players. I give all credit to my assistant coach, all credit for him being able to get all of our offensive players to play and focus and lock in on defense. He said sometimes when we're working on defense, I just leave the building. I'm, I'm, I'm not interested. <laughs> Mike, Mike Neighbors is a very, very enigmatic, eclectic, interesting individual, to say the least. Good attack of the basket that time. It'll be more free throws coming. Just some of the things he collects, shoes, music and movies we know all about. This one is a little bit different. He collects lunch boxes. Yes. His first was of the band Kiss. I think Gene Simmons would be very happy about that. And also figurines and lots of art. He just is a music lover. Important free throws for Slocum. Up and in, and the lead now is 68 to 64. One of the things you probably do not know is that he loved Pop-Tarts. We actually had a Pop-Tart competition with him a few years back and he had to guess which <laughs> pop for which he's good at it he's really good I, I did i did not know that to me seven and a half minutes remaining in this one 69 to 64 is the lead for coach neighbors and the pop tarts espn's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by lowe's home for the holidays Thank you very much. Arkansas out on the run. Live ball turnovers. That's turnover number 18. And Marquisha Davis 
the beneficiary of that errant pass and runs that one down and now a seven point advantage for Arkansas 71 to 64 looking down inside for Smith balls on the floor and taken away by Arkansas Boy, critical juncture of this game. There's still a lifetime left, but good attack of the basket by Michaela Daniels, who shoot a couple of free throws. Well, right off the bat, Baylor comes in and has two unforced turnovers, then comes down, and Carrington has to foul Michaela Daniels. You gotta look at the bench and see Coach Mulkey, just her facial expression on what she knew that her team needed to do in order to win. They could not afford to have the turnovers that they've had. The 18 turnovers is a big number for Kim, any Kim Mulkey team. Make it 19 officially. Daniels now with 12, and Arkansas has done a perfect job so far shooting free throws in this half. 10 of 10 in the third quarter, 3 for 3 so far in the fourth, and their lead is back up to 9. Well, what you characteristically see in an Arkansas Razorback team is as games flow on, they get better. Because of the way that they play, because of the way that they practice, they know that they're going to run. Everybody's in shape. They know what they have to do to continue to stay at a pace like they play. So as you see the game, you see them continue to build. Beautiful pass down inside from Urson to Carrington and a quick timeout. Baylor for the late push. Some difficulty without her offensive punch and at the other end Daniels aggressively will get back to the free throw line. She is one of the top players, not just in the SEC, but in the NCAA. Four players in double figures for Arkansas. No real surprise there, but against a defensive powerhouse like Baylor, that is uh, something that you don't see very often. Missed down inside. That was a big opportunity for Barnum. Still a nine-point advantage. You look at uh, Arkansas, 14 for Slocum, 16 for Daniels. Amber Ramirez having a big game with 20. And Dungey playing through some foul trouble with 17. And it was Carrington, as we talked about, Tamika leading the way for the Baylor Bears, trailing by nine with 6.07 left. Well, the important thing, going back to Dungey and just looking at Arkansas, the important thing that Dungey started the, the flow for this Arkansas Razorback team. Her drive to the basket, her knocking down you know, three-point shot, her getting everybody else set up. The way she plays, the way she goes is how everybody else goes. But the way that she starts is even the most important part. Everybody else has fed off of her. A huge play down inside by Nalissa Smith off the miss by Urson. That it is exactly what Baylor needed. They pounded the offensive glass in the opening half when they traded, trailed it by only two. They need to do that again down the stretch as they've struggled offensively. Well, Smith, that's what she's known for. She gets on the board. She does a great job. Tonight had been a little bit of a struggle getting her going, but right now sitting at 12 points, once she hit the free throw, that'll be 13. But that's just something that this team, they've got to figure out how to play, who to step up, who needs to step up in what moment. Richards has done a great job of being able to facilitate another offensive rebound wow. by Carrington. Baylor is still it. trying to figure out their offensive flow without Egbo on the floor. And just when it felt like Dungy and the rest of the Arkansas Razorbacks had a little bit of breathing room. They give up back-to-back -back offensive rebounds, and that was another huge play by Carrington, who now has 20, but Dungy will get back to the free throw line with it 531 remaining. Both teams in the bonus. Well, you can't get too excited because obviously when Dungy is on the floor, you have got to be conscious of where she is at all times, whether she's knocking down that three or driving and taking it to the basket. You've got to figure out a way to keep the ball out of her hands. 
Benji adding to her total now with 19 so far. And here comes Michaela Daniels and Dungy's almost platooning offense to defense, if you will, with uh, Dungy going to the sideline, but a lifetime left in this game. And the way Baylor's been hitting the offensive glass, looking inside for Smith again. Well, it's interesting yep. when you, you, you look at that, Arkansas being able to substitute players in and out. Baylor does not have that. They have two players, really, Melissa Smith, and Dee Dee Richards are the only two players that really have the experience. When you look at Arkansas, they have a lot of experience. They're starting five, and then you look at the bench. It's just they have a deep bench. They have players that they can rotate in. They have players that Mike Neighbor trust to be in the game. Good entry pass off the wing, and Carrington using her body very, very cleverly up and in for a very important point, 77-72. And that's going to be an offensive foul. Dee Dee Richards again, two plays. Remember, picked up the fourth personal foul, drawing a charge on Dungey and here, working once again, this time on Davis. Look how she moves her feet and stays in front of the defensive, of the offensive player. She doesn't reach, she doesn't try to slap behind, she stays in front, she stays down. Defensive player of the year, that, you know, that's my favorite thing. So that's what it takes to win championships. You've got to be able to play defense. Richards, eight points, six rebounds, six assists, taking a couple of charges and creating some empty possessions for, for Arkansas. It's a lot of time left in this game. Oh, yeah. You've got to love, as a fan, as a coach, you've got to love the way that this game has played out and just how hard these players are playing. Good offensive rebound, reset here. Daniels taking it down the lane, stops, kicks. And off the front of the iron, that shot missed by Mason. That was a really big possession. They're all big right now, but as you pointed out, just under four minutes remaining. And Jalen Mason, we mentioned this earlier in the game, but she had to sit out last season. She's still trying to find her game set mode. And Alyssa Smith has certainly found her game here in the fourth quarter exactly when Baylor needed it. Now with a dozen to go along with seven rebounds. Remember, familiar with Baylor, Queen Egbo has been in foul trouble throughout the course of this contest. Ramirez down the lane, has that shot rejected. Offensive rebound taken by Thomas, and it'll be Arkansas ball. We haven't seen much of Destiny Slocum over the last four or five minutes. Are you surprised by that, Tamika? Well, I think, well, there well, she goes. Well, we're seeing her right, right now. <laughs> <laughs> she, she just, what do you know? She's just coming back in. You should be a coach, Paul. So you already no, subbed no. her in. You must have known. <laughs> <laughs> and Slocum well, she's is had a, a player game. that you want. I was going to say, Slocum is a player that you want on the floor, especially down the stretch. For whatever reason, when the lights shine bright, she is the player that knows how to, how to play in the bright lights. Dungy a change of pace, maybe bailed out a little bit on the foul call. Baylor players can't quite believe a foul was called there, but Dungy will go to the line. Yeah, Chelsea Dungy, that's what she does. Put the head down, get to the basket, get to the free throw line. Dungy on the night, 19 points, 7 of 8 so far from the free throw line. And once again, Arkansas. A perfect 18 for 18 from the stripe so far in the second half. All of these incredibly important. Both teams will be shooting two the rest of the way. The 22nd annual ACC Big Ten Challenge is on ESPN and the ESPN app. And we have a top 15 doubleheader for you Tuesday night. We start at Carver Hawkeye with number three Iowa hosting number 14 North Carolina at 730 Eastern. Then it's the fifth ranked Illinois fighting Illini and the sixth ranked Duke Blue Devils at Cameron Indoor. That should certainly be a great matchup or two on the Sonic Blockbuster. Good look down inside. Carrington somehow found herself all alone and it's a two point game. Dungy again looking to stay aggressive and we'll get back to the free throw line and this time she is fouled by Dejanet Carrington. So making a living right now at the free throw line is Dungy number 33 in white. Well, it's almost it's interesting because as a player and you see Chelsea Dungy continue to drive to the basket, you've got to take a step back and let her drive into you. You know she's on the floor, she's in foul trouble. One more foul, she's out of the game. So you've got to be smart. But Dungy's been really smart too and being able to, to just continue to drive and get to the free throw line. 
through five games, and you pointed it out early on, Dungy averaging 10 free throws per contest, and she's over that now, 9 of 11, and once again, platooning offense to defense, buying some minutes for Dungy, who's been in foul trouble. Not as bad as Queen Egbo for Baylor, but in some foul trouble throughout the course of the second half. Richards has been superb, looking inside, ball deflected away. A really nice play defensively that time by uh, Jalen Mason. Well, you know what Baylor's looking, they're looking to get the ball inside by passing the ball to the Melissa Smith and, and DeJanae Carrington. They got to be smart because Arkansas is, they're all sagging down, trying to force Baylor to take outside shot. Step back, jump shot high off the top of the board and the rebound taken by Baylor. 2.15 left, four point advantage, 80 to 76. Richards given some space. On the wing to Urson, plenty of time on the shot clock. Good defense by Arkansas. Step back jumper. That was really a good defensive possession by the Razorbacks, Tamika. Very good, and they are playing within their system. But Baylor bailing them out. They're, they're not, the spacing on offense is not very good. Timeout is called by Mike Neighbors. He is thinking about the final 145, as is Kim Mulkey. Take us, take us into Mike Neighbors and what he'll be looking for at the offensive end and what Coach Mulkey will be trying to counter with at the defensive end. Well, I think what's been really successful for Arkansas is driving and getting to the basket. You know, when they have their shooters out on the outside, spaced and ready to, to score, you don't need that when Chelsea Dungy's putting her head down and getting to the basket. But it, on the flip side, if she doesn't get those shots, you've got shooters surrounded. Slocum can shoot. Daniel can shoot. shoot. Ramirez can shoot. You've got three shooters out there. Even Taylor Thomas can step out and knock down a shot here and there. So you never know, and that's the great thing that Coach Neighbors has said. You never know who will step up at what point and knock down the shot for our team. And you have to think for Kim Mulkey and the Baylor Bears, they will play their, of course, solid, well-disciplined defense, but they have to do it without fouling. Arkansas is 27 of 33 from the free throw line, where Baylor is just 12 of 18. This is interesting. You got DJNA Carrington. She is up guarding the guard. She's guarding the point guard, but she plays the forward on the offensive end. Really good offensive set and execution, but uh, unable to get anything going. And an offensive foul. Look at that. And look at the dismount by Destiny Slocum at the end of the play. 117 left, still lots of time. And Slocum doing things at both ends of the floor. Yeah, Slocum's not known for her defense, but she does a great job moving her feet, getting in the way, and being able to force another turnover. The, every single possession is so important right now. Offense, you focus on offense. Defense, you focus on defense. And, and Slocum may have a future as a break dancer. That was, that was a pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty good move right at the end. Well, let's see what Arkansas can draw up. Arkansas taking their time, they're using the shot clock. Well, you heard it inside of a minute. Here comes Slocum going one on one, and she will go to the free throw line. That is a positive possession against the clock with time and score. Uh, Baylor has not been efficient and effective, and con or I should say consistent in the way that they play defense starting with Chelsea Dungy and how she's able to get to the basket or get to the free throw line. Then you have Slocum, this shot right here, being able to get to the free throw line. Eight for 10 from the free throw line thus far. Baylor came in knowing what they needed to do as far as trying to make sure that Arkansas, they stayed in front of Arkansas, they have not done a good job, but Arkansas has done a great job of just attacking the basket. There's much more coming your way, of course, this time of year on ESPN. This game starts an incredible lineup Tuesday with a college football playoff top 25 reveal in the ACC. Big Ten challenge following this top 10 matchup. Number nine, Creighton takes on number seven, Kansas at Allen Fieldhouse. Five Eastern, four Central on ESPN. And the ESPN app as this one winds down. Still a four-point advantage. Where does Baylor go? Maybe to Carrington, who's had a huge offensive output so far. The transfer from Stanford, long rebound taken by Slocum. And they look to foul all the way to the other end, and there's no whistle, and we play on. Well, good defense right there. Smith Richards. going straight up. 
Richards lays it off this time to Alyssa Smith, who's had a very solid, <laughs> Kim Mulkey, a little bit of a wry smile, and Alyssa Smith with a really solid second half for the Baylor Bears. Baylor doing a great job on the run right there. You see Urson, Richards, Richards finds Smith streaking down the right side. Great finish right there. Of course, Arkansas not wanting to get into any more foul trouble. Dee, Dee Richards with a magnificent game after a slow first half, at least in terms of scoring. Now with eight points, all of those obviously coming after intermission. Seven rebounds, eight assists, and Baylor having to do all of this virtually the entire game without Queen Egbo on the floor because of foul trouble. She fouled out some time ago. 29.8 seconds left, both teams in the bonus, and a two-point advantage for Arkansas. And under my neighbors, Arkansas has never beaten a top five team. It's going to be interesting to see what defensive possession right this will look like for Baylor. Well, shot clock is off, and there's the foul. Yeah, you got you got to take a foul, and yeah. you send Ramirez to the free throw line. So far on the season, through four games, she's seven of eight for the stripe. We'll look at her numbers so far tonight. She's a perfect four of four, but there'll be plenty of time for Baylor. And if she makes them both, it'll be a two-possession game. I don't know why Baylor wasted time with fouling. They should have fouled right away, it, get her to the free right. throw line. You see that happen, Tamika, all the time. Three, four, five seconds go off. And of course, it's been talked about in the huddle. You have to foul absolutely immediately. Well, the first thing you do is you go for the steal. The second thing is you make an immediate foul. You get him to the free throw line and figure it out. It could go, like you said, if you make both of them, it's a two possession game. She makes one of them, you're down by three, call timeout. You have a lot of time to execute. And that free throw rattles around and out. So even with the make, it's going to be a one possession game. And don't forget with the rules changes some years ago with timeouts remaining. And Baylor does have one. If they choose to, they can advance the ball to midcourt. Second free throw up and good. Baylor, yeah, they'll call timeout and advance. So now the lead is 81 to 78. Arkansas leading it. We were uh, tied after one. It was a very close game at, at halftime, 38-36, and then Arkansas carved out a lead, but the Baylor Bears, in spite of being shorthanded because of foul trouble, to me, just will not go away. What a pedigree they have under Kim Mulkey. Well, they're ranked number four, and there's a reason they're ranked number four, because of the way that they are able to do the thing that they do. Tonight, they've struggled with Egbo not on the floor, but even with her not on the floor, they've put themselves in a position to tie this game and to take it to overtime. I think really what they'll look for right now, I mean, they're shooting 29% from the three field goal. We know that that's not really what Baylor built on. They're really built on their post game, so it'll be interesting to see if they look at the three with Carrington or if they try to get the ball down low to Smith or Carrington and try to get the end one. Baylor, you make a great point about the three-point shooting or lack thereof so far for Baylor. They were two of 22 coming in. So you look at the numbers, they are six of 36 so far through just about three games complete are the Baylor Bears. I agree with you. I think they kick it down inside. Arkansas can't foul. You take the quick basket, and then you play the foul free throw game once again. An Arkansas win would be their first. Baylor still the defending national champion since there was none in 2020. Be the first time they've defeated a national champion since they beat Tennessee. No, Tamika was not there in 1996. That was at Bud Walton Arena. So for Mike Neighbors, it would be his first win over a top five team. And here we go. At the screen. Looks like they are going for the three. Three. That's going to come up well short, saved onto the floor. It was not saved, so it'll be Arkansas basketball. Play set up for Caitlin Bickle, the six-foot junior. She has uh, not taken any three so far on the year. So and now with 11.7, Baylor has to foul immediately. Well, I don't think that that was actually what the play was going for. The play was actually going for Kennington for uh, a skip pass. But you take what you can take, and you learn what you can learn. Arkansas having some trouble getting it in, and they called a timeout to protect that possession. 11.7 seconds remaining, and Arkansas leading it 81 to 78. 
There's still plenty of time. Eleven, uh, plenty of time left in this game. 11.7 seconds. There's a lot can happen. That can happen. Baylor has seen them continuously get steals in this game. Arkansas, at that time, been careless with the basketball. So, a lot of time. Be interesting to see one thing that they need to do. Arkansas needs to take care of the ball and make sure that every single pass that they make is a sure pass instead of sloppily throwing it around the floor. I was just thinking how quiet it is in this building recently. Relatively speaking, if this were under normal circumstances, Bud Walton Arena would be shaken to the rafters with a capacity crowd. With Arkansas a chance with the strides they've made in women's basketball taking on truly one of the elite powers over the last 20 years under Kim Mulkey. Trying to get it in once again, and Slocum is having to call another timeout. Now Arkansas, that that they're out of timeouts. Baylor is also out of timeouts. Yep, clear that slate, and uh, nothing has changed, and we'll do it all over again. <laughs> what would you like to see Arkansas do here, Tamika, to make sure they can get the ball in? Well, they got to set some screens. They're trying to rely on just being able to cut to the basket, and I think Baylor's done a good job of using their length and their quickness to be able to deny those, those entry passes. So it's almost like they're, they need to move that line, where the first line where the, the player where the point guards are trying to step out to get the ball, move it to half court or move it to three quarter court, give yourself more room to work instead of trying to put your players into the corner. Then having Slocum, the senior transfer out of Oregon State, pulling the trigger along the baseline. And we'll see what Baylor can do. They have uh, they can foul here and play that game once the ball is inbounded. So happy to see Dee Dee Richards, uh, the leader for Baylor back healthy playing. Kim Mulkey was very emotional when she talked to us yesterday about uh, the health and, and how concerned everybody in the Baylor family was at that injury. Looking to get it in and immediately the foul is taken by Carrington. Good entry pass and it will be Amber Ramirez going to the free throw line and she has been good all night long. Ramirez is five for six from the line with 21 points. Dungey with 22. Slocum with 14. And Michaela Daniels leading the way with 16 as well. Very balanced wow. attack from Ramirez in Arkansas. Yeah, Arkansas is shooting 14 to 16 from the free throw line just this quarter. So they've gotten them, they've gotten themselves to the free throw line, and they've been able to finish at the free throw line as well. Well, that's been the story of the game in the first half. Baylor stayed in the game by pounding Arkansas on the offensive boards. But look at this with this these two free throws. That'll be that's now 29 of 38 from the free throw line. Baylor is 12 of 18. Both free throws are perfect for Ramirez, and this is going to be a night to remember for Arkansas basketball. First win under the Mike Neighbors regime to beat a top five team and the first win over a defending national champion for a long, long time. Two big free throws and a big night for the Razorbacks and Amber Ramirez. 7.6 left, five point advantage. Well, then Baylor comes down and immediately foul, but turns the ball over. Yep. Careless possession. And Arkansas will comfortably dribble this out. And that is a huge win and further evidence of how far this Arkansas Razorback team has come. Wonderful players, a very interesting, intelligent, hardworking head coach and coaching staff. And that's a huge win for Arkansas women's basketball over one of the premier programs in the entire sport. Your thoughts, Tamika? Yeah, I think Arkansas came out. They executed their game plan. They were able to step up and had Chelsea, behind Chelsea Dungy, they were able to step up and make some critical plays at critical time. Offensively, they did it. Defensively, they stayed together. Up and down, they stayed together, and they were able to come out with this win. Yeah, lots of reasons to celebrate for the Arkansas Razorbacks as they win it. 83 to 78 and make history four players in double figures led by Ramirez with 23 points and a couple of big free throws once again our final score Arkansas 83 number four Baylor 78 coming up next is championship drive who's in Jen Hildreth and Kelly Gramlich are on the call so long from Fayetteville for Tamika Catchings and our entire ESPN crew I'm Paul Sunderland good night everybody